Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. AMD's Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs initially launched in November of 2020, with CPUs ranging from the 16 core 32 thread 5950X all the way down to the 4 core 8 thread APU, the 5300G. There weren't, however, any dual core parts. There technically is a Ryzen 5000 CPU, which does have 2 cores and 4 threads but that's the Ryzen 3 5125C, which is a mobile part. I'm only counting desktop CPUs here. But this all got me thinking, what would a theoretical 2-core and 4-thread desktop Ryzen 5000 CPU actually perform like? Well, today we're going to find out. Now, we can't just magically create a CPU which doesn't exist, so the way we're going to do this is by using my personal PC, which includes a Ryzen 7 5800, an 8 core 16 thread part, and by going into the BIOS and toggling a single setting, we can disable 6 of the 8 cores, leaving only 2 cores left, with hyperthreading or SMT enabled. And for clock speed, I wasn't quite sure what to do here. The Ryzen 3 5300G, a 4 core 8 thread part, has a base clock of 4 GHz and a boost clock of 4.2. The next step up from that, the 5600G, has a boost clock of 4.4. A 200 megahertz difference. So I figured a two core four thread part could probably follow that same kind of pattern. So I set the clock to four gigahertz, as I feel that's probably where AMD would have a dual core four thread Ryzen 5000 part if one happened to exist. Now, a couple of things I need to mention which are going to affect performance over what a Zen 3 based dual core four thread CPU would be able to manage are the fact that I can't seem to find an option to set different clock speeds depending on how many cores are being used, so that 4 GHz is a fixed clock speed for both cores. I'm also not able to cut the amount of L3 cache down as well, so it still has the full amount of L3 cache that the full 8 core 16 thread part does. But I am still quite interested to see how our theoretical dual core Zen 3 based CPU is actually going to perform, so let's fire into the first gaming benchmark. Now, going into the gaming benchmarks, I really wasn't sure what to actually expect in terms of performance. So with GTA 5, I initially tried 1080p with medium settings, or high as the game calls them. But it actually ran so well that the game was hitting the 188fps engine limit and stuttering really bad because of it. Even with max settings in 2x MSAA, we were still seeing issues because of the 188fps limit indoors in some places. Outside though was fine. No stuttering, no hitches, frame rates never dropping below the low 70s, and usually staying around 80 to 100 FPS, even in the generally heavier parts of the map, like the desert area or inner city. Predictably, power draw and temps were quite low, usually around 40 watts for a power draw and 50 degrees Celsius temperature wise. But what surprised me most was that there were actually points where the 3060 Ti I'm using was genuinely almost bottlenecking the CPU. It didn't quite get to 100%, but it was in the pretty high 90s at points. So overall, our theoretical dual core Zen 3 part has had a pretty good start. Fallout 4, which released later on in the same year the PC version of GTA 5 did, runs probably the best out of any single game I actually tested in the video today. It ran so good in fact that CPU usage rarely, if ever, got up to 50%. At first, the game constantly crashed every minute or so, but a quick search online revealed that on RTX cards specifically, such as our 3060 Ti here, the weapon debris setting causes this. Strange, but turning it off though fixes it. Otherwise, we had no issues at all running Fallout 4 in the highest settings at 1080p. We averaged 60fps throughout, which is bang on the game's frame rate cap, and didn't see any kind of stuttering or hitches either. I was quite surprised it ran this well on only two cores. My last memories of Fallout 4 are of playing it nearly a decade ago on the 2500K that I had, and I couldn't use these settings due to performance issues the game had back then, so I'm amazed to see two cores running it so well here. With Fortnite, I really wasn't sure what to expect here at all, because due to its recent update to the Unreal 5 engine, it has become a lot harder to run than it used to be. Zen 3 cores are quite powerful, but there are only two of them. Despite that though, at 1080p with the medium preset and TAA, the game runs really smooth once you're on the ground. 
we averaged over 150 FPS and we were quite often well over that at points. The only stuttering we got throughout the test was in the pre-match area and when diving out the bus at the start of the round, which resulted in that 14.6 FPS 0.1% low. Otherwise, things were pretty smooth overall. 2021's Forza Horizon 5 continues with the surprises today. The game is known for being quite well optimised, but big name games these days tend to need at least four physical cores to run well. With 1080p using the medium preset, low shadows and TAA, we're averaging 118.6 FPS across races and open world driving combined, with pretty decent percentile figures too. There can be minor stuttering and hitches during races, but you're going to be going too fast to actually notice them here. It is more noticeable in open world driving, but it's nothing bad by any means. It's an entirely different story in our last game today though. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with the next gen patch installed had a lot more trouble running on our theoretical CPU's two physical cores. I stuck with 1080p medium here, with FXAA enabled as well. Average frame rates were actually pretty decent at 114.8 but the stuttering and hitches could be really bad at times, as the percentile figures suggest. It was at its worst in the village areas, where it happened quite often and was quite noticeable. Away from those areas though, it was a much better experience. The stuttering and hitches were still there and still noticeable, but thankfully nowhere near as often. With everything said though, and it's been a the theme throughout the video today, it amazes me that we're getting this level of performance out of only two physical cores. Not just with The Witcher 3, but in all of our games in general today. I went into the first game expecting to have to run low settings and still get performance issues, as big name games these days tend to need at least four physical cores to be playable or even start at all. So I was genuinely surprised at the performance we got, especially with the settings I was able to use in most of the games. But that's going to be all for today. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel, especially if you'd like to see more content like this. I'll also leave my Ko-fi link in the description down below if you'd like to support the channel in creating these videos. But thanks to everyone for watching the video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.